All right, now I'm going to show you Jerry Falwell's chart. Hey, man. We have our chart here again. And on the chart last week, we tried to show you a summary of God's plan for the ages. I'm sorry for those of you in this area who cannot see it. We took you back to Calvary, the crucifixion of Christ, and to the resurrection of Christ, the empty tomb, and some days later, the ascension of Christ, 40 days later, to the right hand of his Father. And 10 days later, uh, the descent of the Holy Spirit and the priesthood ministry of Christ and the present church age of grace in which we now live. We have talked about the rapture. This is the sixth message in a series of six messages on prophecy. We told how that Christ will meet his church in the air the church will appear before the Bema judgment or the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb. But on the uh, I gotta look at this. The Bema? What is it, the Bema? The Bema. The altar part or sanctuary in ancient and orthodox churches. Wow. Uh, so you got the rapture, and it appears that um, Falwell doesn't understand that the rapture is part of the judgment. And the marriage feast is the rapture. All right, so let's make this clear. All right, if we can, let's make this crystal clear. Or let's just do it this way. I was gonna keyword search it, but let's do it this way. All right, so we have at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the trump of God and the dead shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And we get a parallel at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. This is the marriage of the Lamb. <laughs> All right, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Alright, it's crystal clear. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb when we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. We are married into this new body, this glorified body. Alright? What Falwell has going on here. It's like a whole nother religion. On the earth will transpire seven judgment of the nations, goat nations, sheep nations. That's interesting. Nations. Why would he put an S at the end of sheep nations? Again, he's teaching some other religion. Because there's only one nation of God only one nation of God there's never been two nations of God there is only one nation of God All right. first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 
Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. All right, so there's only been one nation of God. There's only been one nation of God. In Exodus 19, we are a peculiar treasure. We are a kingdom of priests. We are a holy nation. We are the children of Israel. All right. Chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. There's only been one nation of God. And it shouldn't be nations. Okay, I'm nitpicking a little bit. I get it. But the judgment of God is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And there is that separation from the saved and the unsaved. All right? This is supported all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the harvest. And the tares, which are the unsaved, are gathered and burned. The wheat are gathered and put in his barn. That means we are lifted up into the air. This thing is being taught all throughout the Bible. All right, go to Genesis 3. And we read that... The Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when we are lifted up, and God stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. All right. All right, so did you catch that? Fear before the bema judgment of the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb, but on the earth will transpire seven years called the tribulation period. That's not in the Bible, not anywhere at all. I can't show you, hey, look at this, because it's not anywhere at all in the Bible. In fact, pay attention. The first three and a half of the Antichrist will himself as the Christ. The Antichrist will present himself as the Christ. Jerry Falwell is claiming that Jesus is the Antichrist and that the Antichrist will make an end of sins. That seven years and a three and a half, he's getting it from Daniel chapter 9. All right, make no mistake about it. And he's, it's a direct reference to the 70 weeks and it, that are determined upon thy people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Now, in order this was fulfilled by Jesus when he laid down his life. He put an end to sins. That happened at the conclusion of the 70 weeks. All right, you, you read it here about the last week. All right, well, let's read this one here. And he shall confirm the covenant. That's, Jesus did that with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he laid down his life as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abomination he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. The consummation is the end of the world. The consummation is the marriage supper of the Lamb, when we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, when we put on incorruption and we put on immortality. All right. Now, 
the Antichrist doesn't do any of that. And it's, it, I, it's so bizarre. It's a whole nother religion. And this is not something that should be disputed at all. This is clearly speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's talking about the Messiah, which is Jesus. And here's Jerry Falwell standing in front of God and everybody claiming that Jesus is the Antichrist. So the battle of Armageddon, that's the end of the world. We are lifted up. And Revelation 20 is very clear, very simple, and very easy to understand that at the end of the world, the unsaved are gathered while we're up in the air. We're gathered up into the air. The unsaved is gathered at our feet. And they encompass the camp of the saints about the beloved city. The beloved city is above. It's not on the earth. You are from below. I am from above. All right. And we go to we go to um, Galatians, Hebrews. No, where am I at here? Oh, I forgot. I forgot where I was at. Let's do it this way. Galatians 4, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Jerusalem, the holy city God, is above. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you. For where I am, I forget the here. There you may be also, okay? In my Father's house are many mansions. It's not on earth. It's in heaven. All right, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, not on earth, but in heaven. And if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus ascended to heaven. He didn't ascend to earth. All right. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, the way ye know. All right, so... Now, this is very clear, because this is all throughout the Bible. Genesis to Revelation, when Jesus comes, it's the end of this world. What Jerry Falwell is teaching, it's a whole other religion separate outside of the Bible. The earth will do war against God and the blood shall flow in the streets up to the bridles of the horses. For uh, the only blood that's going to be spilled at the end of the world are the unsaved. Not God's blood. God already spilled His blood. It's not our blood. We're up in the air with God. For 200 miles, that will occur simultaneous with the revelation of Christ in power and in great glory, coming the second time with His church. Remember, He came. At what? What? Alright, so this doesn't make any sense at all. None whatsoever. Let's go to Second Peter chapter three. Alright. And if you know this chapter at all, knowing this first that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. Alright? And saying, where is the promise of his coming since the Father's told us that all things continue from the beginning of the creation? For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was, that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. A clear reference to the days of Noah when they got into the ark and the flood came and destroyed the entire world. Everybody outside of the ark was killed. 
but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and of perdition of ungodly men all right the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night all right that's very clear when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven no man knows the hour all right no man knows but he will come suddenly in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up so when he comes everything on earth will be destroyed by fire all right so let's go back to revelation 20. i mean it's amazing verse um where am i at here verse nine right and the unsaved they compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city in fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them very clearly this is what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up into the air all right looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat all right now tell me knowing this that all these things will happen when jesus comes how can you then say jesus will come again with his church there won't be any unsaved people left in your even in your scenario unless you think the scripture is lying it doesn't make any sense man what jerry falwell and his followers teach and the world is full of them today they're teaching a whole nother religion they really are they really really are let's see I want to point one verse out here do you really need to depend on Jerry Falwell to teach you Let's see, in First John chapter 2, verse 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him amazing why would you need experts and scholars in these guys <laughs> to teach you the Word of God where do they get their information from are they, they're getting it from God and we got to depend on them no that's stupid we get our information directly from God and the only thing we have to do is believe what we read that's it that's the secret believing is the key all right is there any more nonsense here at the beginning of the tribulation for his church now coming with his church and some 75 days later sitting down upon the throne of david in jerusalem then after the judgment of the nations the millennial reign of christ when christ will that doesn't even begin to make any sense I, I don't know did he say that Christ is coming and then he comes again with the church and reigns for a thousand years and then what he comes again third time in Revelation 20 verse 11 and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them amazing 
So is that what he's teaching? You know, I don't think he's being entirely honest here. He, you know, you look at this here, the heaven and earth, the earth and heaven fled away. This is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. When it says, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. From whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And again, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. When Jesus comes, it's the end of this world. Think about Matthew 24. Jesus is asked specifically, What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And at the end of the world, he comes in the clouds of heaven. And the sun is dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Do you think they're going to be restored? To what it is now? Well, why would all these things happen if they were going to be if everything is going to be restored to what it is now. No. It's going to be a new earth and new heavens. That's why all this is happening. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. We read this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. We Really, we read it all throughout the Bible. It's in, it's incredible. It says the same thing over and over and over. The sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Over and over and over. It's all throughout the Bible, the same thing. Uh, this is not teaching what Jerry Falwell is teaching at all. And men's hearts failing them for fear? Why? Because they know it's the end of the world. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress, distress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking for after those things which are coming on the earth for the power of heaven shall be shaken. Right, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. That's what he's promised all, all throughout the Bible. This is promised in Genesis 3. It shall bruise thy head and not shall bruise his heel. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you and I will come again and receive you unto myself. When he comes, the whole earth is destroyed. All the unsaved are destroyed. Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. It's all throughout the Bible. Same thing, over and over and over. All right, at the harvest, that's the end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world. Over and over, what Jerry Falwell, Falwell teaches, this, it's nonsense. It's a whole nother religion. Who rule on this earth for 1,000 years. Rule over the unsaved. All right, just like I've shown you in previous videos, the people claim that during this 1,000 years, you're going to be having sex like you're 20 years old. They can't wait. They're going to be having babies, and it's going to be a second opportunity for people to get saved. That's not true. That's pure evil to teach that. When Jesus comes, the game is up. It's over. The end of this world. There is no more opportunity for men to get saved. It's over. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of this world. 
And think about this, man. You can't get around this. First Corinthians 15. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. That's it. No more death. So you can't have babies. You can't have the unsaved people. After Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This whole thing. Is. Sign. It, it, it has nothing to do with the Bible. Jerry, what Jerry Falwell is teaching. It's a whole nother religion. 